for the nice uh, introduction. So that's basically the history of my life. I mean, is uh, you know, I was uh, surprised. You know, five minutes is the history of my life. So that's what I've been doing, and uh, what I'm today here uh, is to try to address some of the questions that uh, I've seen are uh, really the theme of this event, of which, by the way, I congratulate the organizer, I congratulate us both. I congratulate us both for uh, their first brilliant 50 years. I already told Enrique that uh, I'm already available to come back here to Ecuador uh, at the next 50 year celebration. And you know, we'll have a lot of fun. So if I look at the, at the question that you know, you are, uh, you're posing yourself and you're posing to uh, your distinguished uh, uh, guest, so uh, reviveremos, uh, well, we will survive by uh, the climatic changes. Good question. I hope so. Um, depend if you're optimistic or realistic. Um, you know, the question more specifically, you know, is the time ready for having an invisible machine that can really uh, profit of the advances nanotechnology? And more uh, down to the uh, theme that you want me and, uh, and the other colleagues uh, address in this session, you know, technology, technology of information and communication. Uh, a, um, a society uh, more developed and more intelligent. And you put a question mark and you do well because, you know, it's a, it's a very important question. And then, you know, other, other questions that, uh, you know, you are, you are putting in your program. So let's try to uh, address those. Of course, you know, I don't have the pretension uh, to uh, be able to respond to such an ambitious question. I mean, what is the impact of computer in the future of human society? That is something I'm happy to discuss with you and happy to point to a, a few milestones and to give you my little humble contribution based on the experience of my life developing high performance computing for science that Eric has so, so well described uh, as part of my introduction. So what I want to do in these uh, 40 minutes, and please, uh, Enrique, give him maybe a sign when I have five minutes left, so I'll make sure not to overrun the time. You know, it's a, it's a very nice characteristic of Latin speakers like me, too. You know, you're given 40 minutes, and two days later, you're still, uh, you're still there talking. So sh shoot me if I, if I speak too long. So what I really would like to do is try to address this question. I mean, you know, partially, I have no magic uh, answer. But I think it may be interesting at this point in time, and also, you know, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of this poem, but computers are more or less the same age. I was reflecting while preparing this talk. You know, they were not really very much uh, around before, you know, the time this poem was created. So maybe a good way to start this discussion, I think we lost the audio, didn't we? No? It's okay. Can you still hear me? Not well. Not well. Okay, so, okay, fine, nice back. You see, I mean, technology is still a long way to go, but, you know, we will, we will survive that as well. Anyway, so I think if we maybe reflect on the last 50 years and, you know, try to reflect very fast because we don't have much time, you know, I really would like to see some of uh, the major invention, the major accomplishment of information technology, which has characterized the first, first 50 years uh, of, of computing, 50 or 60 year computing, maybe a little, little longer. Um, and then try to reflect on the impact on society of some of those. And of course, we have no time to cover all, so I will uh, concentrate more on uh, you know, the emergency on the web, the emergency of the, the, the e-society, the e-commerce, the e-science. And then, you know, since uh, Enrique mentioned uh, many times grid cloud computing, which is actually my business, uh, in the last few years, I will maybe spend a bit more time there and then try to discuss with you a few conclusions on what kind of impact at such economic level on the health or the well-being of the, of the human society you know, the future is going to uh, uh, bring. So that is the slide which I'm going to spend a few minutes. I mean, is my... Is mine? Is mine? Uh, is my point of view... Uh, you know, I'm not humans, you know, I'm an, the Atavar of me, I mean, I'm still in Galapagos and, you know, here just an Atavar, so don't, don't worry. Um, so basically, if we, if we take this timeline, as, as you see, I mean, you know, as Paul was more or less started around this time, and, you know, before then, you know, around, you know, the 1940, well, you all know that, you know, the first computer uh, were born. 
So that is a very important milestone because it was the idea to have a machine perform calculation instead of a humans. So that is really, you know, if you want to have a starting point, I think that is the starting point. But those machines were very hard to program. They were basically capable to execute a single program. If you wanted to reprogram a machine, in many cases you have really to go and change the hardware, move cables around, you know, there are many different things. So it was actually pretty hard. But the idea of having a machine doing a calculation till then only performed by humans was born. And interesting to notice that, you know, that is something not very well known, that at more or less at that point in time, somebody came up with the idea to have a personal machine as an extension of a human memory, and it was called Memex, you know, memory standard. In essence, is a good description of what a personal computer was going to be, you know, 50 years later. So there always be in the history of humanity, in the history of society, people who were anticipating the visionary uh, 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 view of, over the world and their ideas were implemented many, many years ago. I don't want to uh, go back to the abuse example of Leonardo da Vinci was anticipating almost anything a few centuries before. But then I think in a major milestone that really made computer useful for, in general, for scientists and, uh, and for militaries, you know, there was, uh, you know, a, a strong pressure from uh, military, you know, to develop this kind of machine, was high-level programming, which came around, you know, a few years later, and that really made computer programmable. So really, at that time, point in time, the computer became an instrument that allowed scientists, you know, to do calculation. And that, if you want the, the input on the society, is this that enable in the following years, for instance, the space research, sending the, the man on the moon, you know, sending the first Putnik. Well, I was visiting the Space Research Center in Moscow not long ago, and I saw the instrument they were using to send the first man in space, you know, Yuri Gagarin, you know, in, uh, in, in the 60s, the early 60s, and you'd be scared. I mean, most of the calculation was done still with the rulers, and they were still able to, uh, to do it and to be successful. And then the transistor, at the same time, made computers reliable enough to become instruments that everybody could use. So those, I think, you know, are important milestones. And then everybody knows that ARPANET, again, for, uh, for military, for defense purposes, start to develop the idea of connecting computers together, and that basically was the... the uh, the uh, originator, the predecessor of what then eventually became this over pervasive network, you know, with the advent of TCP IP and internet and everything else. And then, you know, around, you know, around this time, end of the 70s and early 80s, you know, 